Hi, this is Fatima. Here let us discuss about model binding in ASP.NET Core with complex type. Before proceeding to this video, watch my previous video to get a clear idea about this model binding in ASP.NET Core MVC. In our previous video, we have discussed what is this model binding and how it extracts the data from the HTTP request and provides them to the controller action method parameters when it is a simple type such as integer or string. Now let us see how this model binding occurs in ASP.NET Core MVC application with complex types. This is an ASP.NET Core MVC application we have created with a simple empty project template. Let us use this in order to understand the model binding complex types. Model binding also works with a complex type such as the customer or order or the product etc. If you see here this get request of this URL is mapped to the add action method of the home controller class. Now let us add one more action method add for the post request. So let us have an object parameter here. form is posted to the server by clicking on this add button then the values in the forms are mapped to this product object parameter of this add action method i product repository interface we are not having any method for the add products so let us have the method for the add products that returns the product The return type is product. We are going to have the method like add. We are going to pass the product. Now let us provide the implementation for this method in the sample product repository. Click on this and give this implement interface so it will provide the signature for our method. So let us now add this product that comes in to this product list. So underscore product list dot add the incoming product. We need to return this product. If you see this form values, we are having the option to get name, description, size and price but not the product ID. But here if you see the product list contains the product that contains the ID. So in order to provide the product ID for the incoming product, we are calculating the maximum count of this product list plus adding one to it by using the link functionality and assigning, to the, assigning it to the ID property of the product, incoming product and we are adding the complete product to the product list and returning those product with these changes in place so now we have the implementation of the add method that we add in this iproduct repository if you see here in this home controller class we are already injecting the instance of the iproduct repository through the constructor of this home controller class by the constructor dependency injection. So let us use the instance repository 
and to its add method let us pass this product parameter So the product written from this method is assigned to this new product. Now let us redirect to the details action method. So written redirect to So let us return redirect to action. The parameter says action method name that is details action method. And we have to pass the route values. So let us create a new and assign this new product id to this route value id so dot id this is because if you see here it returns the redirect to action result so let us change this return method to redirect to action result so with this changes in place now let's run the application when we navigate to this add method, we get this error ambiguous action exception method that is multiple actions matched. This is because ASP.NET Core does not know which action method to execute as we are having two add methods in this home controller class. So we want this first add method to respond to the get request and the second add method to respond to the post request. In order to tell this, let us create this with HTTP get. And the second method with HTTP post so that it will respond to the post request. So we decorated with this attribute. With this changes in place, now let's run the application. So with this changes in place, now let's run the application. So click on this add product give some product values polycotton prices 150 click on this add button you can see here new product is added with our details we provided now so if you click on this back button you can see the recently added product here but even if you are not providing any details and click on this add button still it creates a new product with the product ID 107 without name description and the prices default so if you back to the page you can see here the new product is added here in order to avoid this, we have to provide validations. So at this moment, um, this form, add form, does not have any validation in place. So if we submit the form without filling any fields, we will end up creating a new product whose name and description and these fields are null. Let us discuss the form validation in our next video. Hope you enjoy this video. Our next video is about model validation in ASP.NET Core application. Thank you.